and welcome back to the Wapla Virtual Academy. I'm going to be covering in this session how to connect to a remote database from Wapla. Um, and by this I don't mean via Docker, the more I'm using the more traditional um, FTP type server and um, database connections. So let's pop into Wapla. Um, quick explanation of how Wapla um, connects to a database. Uh, it uses a, a special connection um, script within the server. And if you remember, if, if you looked at the modules regarding setting up FTP channels, I stressed the importance of the FTP settings pointing to the web route, not the FTP route. And the reason is that when we create this um, database connection scripts will be uploaded to the web root and the then Wapala will con, will uh, communicate with the database via those scripts if your FTP settings are not set up correctly then those scripts will go into the wrong place and the connection uh, won't work we create the initial connection via a server action and uh, once we've created that server action with that database connection which we will then externalize and link uh, we can use that connection setting within any further server actions that we create for this domain but of course first thing we've got to do is we've actually got to have a database to connect to uh, Wapla training is on uh, Wapla hosting so I'm just going to quickly create a MySQL database within that we'll just call that uh, surprise supplies Wapla training and then if I just click create a bit create database just takes a couple of seconds and it will create that MySQL database I'm just going to change the password just purely because it makes it easier for me to remember um, and save that Okay, so I'll just drag that off screen at the moment. Let's go back into Wapla and let's create a link to that. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to do that by creating a server action. Now, this is effectively just a dummy server action that I'm creating because all we're going to be using it for is to create the uh, connection. Um, and... I can just give that any basic name that we want. Um, we'll give that MakeCon. Because the, the server action itself is not the important bit. It is actually the step that we're creating that's the important bit here. So if we go into steps and we go into database actions, database connection, uh, let's give that a... More reasonable name con training and we're going to the connection options this is a mysql database and you'll see now it will ask for the various settings i'm just going to copy and paste them from uh, my other screen so our server address was as we had in that database creation our database name and username in this case are identical most cases you can just totally ignore the port it'll default to the standard uh, mysql port and our password was 21 dollar just make a quick mention of prepare statements that's really to do with using uh, sql views within uh, wapler um, under certain circumstances, trying to connect to a view can cause a error. Um, by leaving prepared statements to auto, that will try to manage that error automatically and effectively reconfigure itself to work around that. But if you start getting messages regarding uh, errors and prepared statements, I suggest that you just simply change that to true to leave that active all the time. Um, particular servers I use don't use uh, certificates so I'm not going to go into that uh, at this stage uh, we should just be able to click test connection database okay so as we test that connection basically Wapla has um, communicated with those scripts that are in our web route um, those scripts have then connected to the database and then the information has been sent back from the database to those scripts and then fed back to Wapla um, 
as a, effectively a JSON response. That's basically about all we need to know about uh, creating a connection. Just a little aside, um, if you change your database structure, then obviously Wappler needs to under, uh, be able to reread that database schema, otherwise it won't know you've added or removed or renamed fields. And one of the ways of doing that within Wappler is simply to open that connection and resave it, and that requeries a database and sets everything up again. And then if, when we hit save, it will ask you about linked file actions. Uh, just tell it yes and that will save those connection settings. You'll notice automatically it's created a linked file for us. That little uh, chain link is has gone blue and that tells us that the file containing is actually now an externalized file. And just to quickly show you now, if we were to create a second server action, I'll um, and create a stage to that, if we want the database action, we could actually click on training. If you're wondering what DB is, that's actually a, a, an automatic Docker connection that Wappler creates um, when you actually add Docker to it. So we can then just add con con training at any time to uh, any server action, and we don't need to redefine those parameters again in the future. So basically, that's how we're going to how to create a connection to a database within Wappler. Um, we'll be using that connection from now on for any future modules and I'll be looking at the basic um, querying of databases and display that information in future videos. So thanks for joining me and uh, I'll say goodbye now.